The Kessler syndrome is a chain reaction of collisions among space debris that, once it sets in, might leave orbits entirely unusable. In the past years, we've seen an increasing number of satellites breaking up and near collisions with space debris. So how close are we to the Kessler syndrome? The Kessler syndrome was conjectured in 1978 by NASA scientist Donald Kessler. Astronomers and space enthusiasts likewise have feared it ever since. Kessler said that once there is too much stuff circling in low Earth orbit, some of it will inevitably fall apart and create debris that will uncontrollably splatter into unknown orbits. This can create a cascade in which debris gets increasingly smaller and eventually distributes around the entire globe. The issue is becoming increasingly pressing. In June, a defunct Russian satellite broke up into more than 100 pieces and forced the International Space Station to adjust course. In August, a Chinese rocket broke up upon launch, leaving behind more than 250 50 pieces of debris in orbit. And just two weeks ago, an Intelsat satellite suddenly and inexplicably lost power and seems to have broken up into at least 20 pieces, which is also a pretty good description of me on a Friday afternoon. And that's just what happened in the past couple of months. The European Space Agency estimates there are more than 100 million pieces of debris in low Earth orbit already, while most of them, about 130 million, are smaller than one centimeter in diameter, about a million is between one and ten centimeters, and about 40,000 of them are larger than that. The total is more than 13,000 metric tons, about twice the weight of the Eiffel Tower. If the Kessler syndrome becomes reality, it might mean that we simply can't put any more satellites into these orbits. Most of the debris will fall down to Earth eventually, but leaving aside that this isn't great either, it would take hundreds or even thousands thousands of years. So just how close are we? In a paper that just appeared, scientists used a stochastic model for launches, re-entry and collisions and projected it into the future. For this, they assumed that the current launch rate of about 1,500 satellites per year remains stable. They find that runaway debris growth would begin around the year 2050. The projection sensitively depends on two factors. One is the number of pieces of debris that is created per collision, which they estimate to be between several hundred and around 1,000. The second one is the deorbit time, that's the period for how long decommissioned satellites can remain in orbit before they have to be removed, usually by burning them in the upper atmosphere. The deorbit time is currently 25 years. Reducing it to five years would much delay the problem and give us more time to find a way to deal with it. So how do we deal with it? Scientists and engineers have proposed various ways to deal with debris. This includes most importantly sweeping orbits to collect junk and then usually dumping it into the atmosphere to burn, or using lasers to nudge pieces of junk into other orbits, either to avoid collisions or, again, to force a re-entry into the atmosphere. NASA recently looked into what's the best method in in terms of cost and effectiveness, and ground-based lasers came out well ahead. You may wonder why it's better to use ground-based lasers than having them in space. This is because it's easier to generate the necessary power if you're hooked onto the electric grid. By the way, I have a free weekly newsletter with some extra content. All you need to do is sign up at sabinehossenfelder.com slash newsletter. Some of these efforts are already underway. For example, the project Remove Debris, which ran from 2018 to 2019. It tested technologies like nets and harpoons for capturing space junk. These tests were successful. The harpoon hit a target and the net captured a piece. However, these were not real pieces of debris, but objects that were previously deliberately placed there. One prominent project that's currently being planned is Clear Space One, backed by the European Space Agency. If successful, it'll be the first ever mission to actually remove debris. The plan is to use robotic arms to grab and deorbit a 100 kilogram payload adapter that's been floating around in orbit since 2013. The ESA mission is scheduled for launch in 2026. And the Japanese startup X Fusion is quite literally aiming at the 
the sky. In cooperation with the Australian defence company Electro Optic Systems, they are about to use a big laser to shoot small pieces of space debris out of orbit. X-Fusion, as the name suggests, actually develop their lasers to shoot at fuel pellets of hydrogen in the hopes that they'll undergo nuclear fusion and create energy. However, the laser power needed to knock a small piece of junk out of the sky turns out to be lower than that needed for nuclear fusion. So if it doesn't work out with my life, I'll just call myself X Sabina and start shooting things out of the sky. More seriously, there's a lot of commercial interest behind keeping low Earth orbits usable, so I'm quite optimistic that something will be done about it. Or maybe our children will make a hobby of collecting satellite parts. Do you know the joke about the two guys running from a bear? Do you really think we'll outrun the bear, says one of them. And the other one says, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. That's how I think about internet safety. I don't have to outsmart hackers. I just have to be a little more difficult target than most of you. And that's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that you install on your phone or laptop. It provides a secure and private connection for your internet browsing and it comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It's super convenient because it allows you to pick your location. You see, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world and you can choose one. This allows you to access websites in other countries by using a server located there. I find this especially convenient to get around all the blockages on US pages for visitors from the European Union. If you use our custom link nordvpn.com slash Sabine or the coupon code Sabine you'll get a better deal and I can really recommend it. I found NordVPN super easy to use. It installs with just a few clicks and hasn't caused me any trouble. You can combine it with a password keeper called NordPass and a secure platform to store and share files called NordLocker. If you get them all together, you'll get a better price and they all have a 30-day money-back guarantee. To make use of our special offer, go to nordvpn.com slash Sabine or use the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.